Suspended Collington County Sheriff R.A. Strickland has been hit with multiple indictments. I sit down one-on-one -on -one with attorney David Ayler to give his analysis on this case for this edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and download my free Quentin's Close-Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. David Ayler, welcome back to Quentin's Close-Ups. It's always good to be with you, Quentin. I appreciate it greatly. Well, let me talk to you about the developing news. Obviously, there's news coming out of Collington County regarding the ex uh, Collington County Sheriff R.A. Strickland, and his bond was set at $25,000 yesterday by Richland County Court uh, Swag Lead Judge uh, Benjamin. And the bond was set at $25,000 because he was also ordered not to have any contact with the Sheriff's Office. During Strickland's arraignment on Tuesday afternoon, he was ordered to surrender any firearms to sled officials. This follows after South Carolina Attorney General Alan Wilson announced earlier in the day that he has unsealed two new indictments detailing a total of 50 new accounts against suspended Collington County Sheriff R.A. Strickland. David A. Ill is an attorney. How do you look at it right now? Well, it, it's a situation that's different than what uh, would happen to an average citizen, meaning he was an elected official, and the accusations um, that he's, of course, innocent until proven guilty of um, are various uh, alleged crimes that he committed while he was a sheriff. And so that's why the attorney general's office is the one that did uh, the actual and going forward with the indictments from the grand jury um, from an investigation that uh, I believe was probably conducted mainly by SLED agents. Sled. Okay, and the new indictments alleged strictly made deputies and sheriff's office staff spend time on duty working on improvements to his home, land, and other properties as well as his political campaign. During Tuesday's court hearing, prosecutor says code 48 was the code for employees to do work on Strickland's house and was also the code to use to work on his sheriff's campaign while they were on duty. How was we? How are we looking at that as far as years? Well, I mean, you know, what it boils down to is this: you can't uh, have any personal servitude when you're in the role of any type of elected official or government official. Um, there was a sheriff several years ago that got in trouble for something similar to that, where he actually had inmates going to a property that he had and working on it. Um, so what they're concentrating on there and what they're alleging is that he essentially abused his power and used uh, subordinates under him to do personal servitude to to him while being employed um, as deputy sheriffs uh, and being paid by you and me, the taxpayers. Taxpayers. And according to the prosecutor, Strickland, uh, Strickland actually allegedly used his power to control employment status and pay an employee, employee who he had sex with him. Yeah, again, then you're looking at a, you know, a couple different things there, but it's still that position of power. Um, that's someone that was working under uh, him in some sort of capacity. Um, and whether or not the allegation comes up to be more of a pressureful situation um, or it just being a scenario where someone was paid that maybe was not actually performing a job that he just had a personal relationship with. So it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, charges and they come through grand juries, people need to understand that just because you're indicted for something, uh, doesn't mean that's no, nothing uh, even close to uh, being found guilty by a jury uh, through a conviction. And Alan Wilson also says that the indictments alleged Strickland used public funds of Collington County to be spent on non-official lodging expenses during a law enforcement conference in Mount, Mount Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Talk to me about that common law. Well, the issue we have there is we've seen this with a lot of sheriffs, um, at least allegations uh, over the last several years. Post and Courier has done a lot of coverage on it, some great work if you have, I'm sure you've seen that, um, is that, you know, when you're using public funds, you're allowed to have certain expenditures uh, for travel, things like that, hotels, people that are within the public sector go to conferences all over the world, right? Um, but the difference is they're very uh, strict and specific with what the money can be used for, how much money it can be used for, and more importantly, who it can be used for. Uh, we've seen and oftentimes there's been scenarios where it's as simple as they got their children who were going along with them for the trip in the conference uh, an extra room. Uh, well, you know, their children aren't elected officials. Their children are not coming in the capacity uh, of a government employee. So even though it's their actual children, um, it, it still comes down to the fact that that m public money cannot be used for those reasons. And it goes on to say this. Strickland also allegedly provides Schedule 4 controlled substances to subordinate who did not have a valid prescription for the substance and has been accused of providing alcohol to subordinate under the age of 21. 
Well, you got two different things there. Obviously, the alcohol side of it would be uh, what you often see is called contributing to delinquency of a minor by providing them alcohol because of the fact that they're under the age of 21, um, which makes that illegal. And then the controlled substances is something, unfortunately, we often see a lot um, throughout uh, working within the criminal law field. And essentially what it boils down to is even if it was per se his prescription, the fact that it's controlled substance and he allegedly provided it to someone else who did not have a valid prescription, um, that's no different than uh, essentially illegally selling street drugs in, in some form or capacity within the law because when you provide that drug that's controlled substance to someone else it has now become illegal just it would also be illegal for that person that then has it in their possession because again they don't have that prescription and he allegedly well he's actually accused of allegedly distributing the prescription drugs and being an adderall according to wilson Right. And, you know, what specific evidence they have on that, we have not seen yet. Uh, obviously, these are just the uh, initial indictments and there'll be a lot more information. So, you know, when you hear a lot of these different charges, particularly when you hear grand jury and indictment, people automatically think someone is in a whole lot of trouble because on, on the forefront, it could appear that way. Um, but, you know, what happens down the line, what evidence they actually have, um, what statements uh, could maybe be contradicted, you really just kind of want to withhold judgment. Uh, he has a great defense team in place um, and you know why it's easy for the public to quickly sort of snap back and think oh well this person has done all these terrible things that they're alleged they are just that allegations at this point right and uh, let me go back to Collin County because a second new indictment in Collin County from a state grand jury that is shows six counts of misconduct in office three counts of embezzlement two counts of unofficial well, official proposition for financial gain ethics act violation one count of use of public funds property or time to influence an election and one count of a scheduled uh, second controlled substance. Time to influence an election. How do you read that as an attorney? Uh, essentially, when it comes down to whether it be uh, his own election or be a different one, it's a, uh, what my understanding is that um, trying to you know put forth his political motives um, within other races or within his own race but that there's nothing wrong with a politician who's elected office having a campaign running a campaign the issue is you can't have people that are working under the cloak of a government employee working for your personal campaign um, there's as we know it's election season uh, from you know city and county council seats all the way up to president of the United States they all have a lot of them are in a public sector position um, and then they're trying to either get reelected or they're trying to um, be elected for the first time into a different position and there just has to be that fine line that's drawn between the two of what you're doing on the public side, who's working for you on the public side. One easy example I can give is oftentimes people that have staff members that are going to be a part of the campaign, they will take a leave of absence from their public position. So they're no longer being compensated by their public position with by the government and then work on the campaign, which would be a private entity. Entity. And then obviously he was arrested on November 9th on charges of second degree domestic violence in connection to an incident two days earlier. What is the biggest difference between then and now in your mind when it comes to this case? Well, the biggest difference is one of that, that's going to be a local investigation that was done uh, for a, a domestic violence uh, allegation. So that wouldn't have anything to do with his role as sheriff. Um, everything that has come down from the attorney general's office is specific to him in his position um, as sheriff. You know, so basically uh, when he was charged with a criminal domestic violence uh, offense, uh, that was being charged as a private citizen. Essentially, he did not have any role. Now, Obviously, it affected um, his position as a sheriff as he was suspended um, soon thereafter, but it's not related to his role as sheriff, is my understanding. My understanding. And of course, let me make a disclaimer. You're not uh, representing Mr. Strickland at all, but thank you for your time, David Ailey, here on Quentin's Close-Ups. It's always great to see you, Quentin, and uh, you know it'll be interesting to see how this plays out, um, but I think it'll take a, a good amount of time and a lot more information can come out, either positive or negative or both. To be continued. Yeah, thank you. Good to see you, man. Likewise.